Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're going to be covering all of the information in regards to the brand new Series 9 rule set that'll be kicking into effect on the doubles rank ladder in Pokemon Sword and Shield. So on the 1st of May, these rules will take effect. That'll be tomorrow if you're watching this video as of the upload date. We'll cover all of the information in regards to these changes. We're going to be saying goodbye to Series 8 and all those restrictors and then revert back to series seven so we're going into an already developed format which is something different that we've not had before we'll cover all the information all the updates in regards to teams things to watch out for and i'm going to wrap up with a bunch of rental teams for you all to help you out get started in the, this series nine format but before we get into the meat and bones of today's episode i do need to give a big shout out to today's video sponsor into the am they are a very unique clothing brand they provide basic tees graphics tees, uh, hoodies, sweats, everything that you kind of need and the quality is amazing. They've been kind enough to send me a bunch of graphic tees and this one's probably one of my favorites. I love the tee, I love the fit, the quality is amazing and I'm very particular with my clothing. I like high quality stuff because then it lasts longer because if you love something you want it to last for a long time. These are amazing quality, they feel soft, they feel very good quality and the graphics on the tees is amazing as well. They have a bunch of unique artists that work for their graphic department on all the tees so you can check out all of these and their other array of products using the link down in the description below and if you use the link that is there with the um, discount code uh, you'll get 10% off at checkout. That is into the AM forward slash Osiris 10. You get 10% off a discount. And they also have a big graphic tee bundle going on at the minute. You get three graphic tees for $60. So you don't get just good quality tees, good fitting tees. You get amazing value for your money as well. Three tees for $60. It's not too bad, is it? Uh, so definitely check them out and um, take a look. And hopefully you're going to grab yourself some amazing clothing. But big shout out to into the AM and uh, without further ado friends let's get into today's video so like i say series 9 is a format that we've kind of already played it's going to be series 7 rules we played that a few months ago the rule set is going to be no restricted so like i've said bye bye to Groudon, bye bye to Kyogre, Zacian, Calyrex, they're not going to be allowed or eligible to be used in this new format. You're going to have access to the full national decks as long as the Pokemon have the Galar symbol or they have the battle ready symbol that you can acquire in Winden. So you've got no restrictions on legendaries, you're going to have the likes of Landorus, Thunderous, uh, all your your Glastriac, uh, Spectra, they're all going to be allowed still and there's no limit on having how many of those in one team. Now getting back to series seven because if we look back to that format we can see that there were a lot of kind of predominant kind of strategies coming out just going through these will help you kind of prepare going into series nine for sure so the first one we're going to touch on is screen support so Grimmsnarl was a huge pokemon in the back end of series seven supporting things like venusaur uh support well pretty much supporting anything with screen support you know it's got that prankster ability light screen reflect going to be a big problem. Got Scary Face, got Thunder Wave for speed control as well and can really disrupt through things like Spirit Break as well. Big Pokemon and obviously once the screens go up you've got uh, you're on a counter to try and wait for those to go away and everything is a lot harder to take care of. You stack that up with residual damage from something like G-Max Vine Lash from Venusaur and it's a very kind of good solid combination to take advantage of which players have had a lot of success with. So that is the first thing to kind of keep in mind. Something like Togekiss would be something you know I've spoke to players as well Togekiss scope lens uh, can get those critical hits and kind of bypass the screen so that's a nice option to think about and I do think Togekiss has a place in series 9 uh, whether that'll come to kind of fruition or not but I do feel like Togekiss can be in a good place to deal with something like Grimmsnarl and then put a lot of pressure onto other Pokemon that are quite popular like Urshifu um, and other Pokemon like that so Togekiss one to watch out for but screen support definitely something to be aware of going into series 9 the next big thing to mention is weather. So the big weather uh, battle in this format is all really going to be based around sun. Uh, Toko going to be your main kind of sunset uh, paired up with the likes of Venusaur and Charizard. Just an extremely powerful kind of core of Pokemon. You've got Venusaur that can Gigantamax. You've got Charizard that can Gigantamax and both take advantage of Toko's sun. Uh, they've both got residual damage in their G-Max Vine Lash or G-Max Wildfire respectively. And uh, they can just chip away at you every 
U-turn. And, you know, the one thing that the weather always has over any other kind of traditional speed control like Trick Room or Tailwind, it doesn't take any turns to set it up. So you're not spending any turns. You're ready to go as soon as that ability takes effect. Things like wheezing will definitely help out with that. They prevent the, uh, the weather from taking effect and allow you a little bit more room and movement. But you can also counter weather with your own weather. Sand is something that I don't think has been fully explored so things like Gigalith, things like Titar could be Pokemon that you could bring in and definitely rain feels like it has a place when sun's around it's just having the right checks for things like Venusaur and the cover for things like that that are going to be a little bit problematic especially with Rillaboom in the format as well it can put a lot of pressure onto things like Politoed which is going to be primarily your main rain setter but also you don't need to go with a, a manual you can go with manual rain you know you don't need to go with auto rain you can go manual rain things like Thunderous incarnate with prankster they can get the rain up for you uh, and there's a lot of other prankster users that have access to it the other team build to mention as well going into series 9 is obviously colossal it's the elephant in the room it's a big powerful pokemon it took players cup 2 wolfie glick took the title there with colossal uh, that common kind of build there with the rillaboom the urshifu rapid strike gmax colossal you've got galarian moltres in there as well a real kind of common core of pokemon and obviously once that steam engine gets set up by either the the Ursh or the Dragapult that you commonly see on those teams, then it's very hard to handle. Trick Room's kind of a very good kind of counter action to that, that, that mod, you know, having something like Porygon 2, something like Dusclops that can come in and set the Trick Room up. It really counteracts the Steam Engine and allows you a little bit more room and movement to kind of counter those teams. Things like Landorus Therian with an Assault Vest as well can do a good job, but you've got to be very careful around very good players with this team. As we saw Wolf kind of pilot that team very well well, a lot of players are going to be able to do that and kind of get around the big main counters to Colossal and leave it for more of an end game than an early game that we've seen in previous formats. So GMAX Colossal, definitely something to keep an eye out for and definitely something to get practice with and have answers for going into this new format. The next one on our list is Glastria. It is the ice type Pokemon and it's since its introduction in the Crown Tundra, it's taken everyone by storm. You know, it's had some amazing finishes and constantly and consistently does well in in this format uh, it's not going away either needs trick room to perform but not always a trick room pokemon and does really appreciate screen support as well obviously has and does carry things like assault vest weakness policy white herb and lumberry are a few of its items that are commonly found on glastria but an extremely dangerous pokemon especially with that chilling near ability once it starts getting knockouts those attack boosts are just going to set it on a real snowball and it's going to be hard to kind of contain things like torkoal definitely help out uh, things like status help out as well if you can burn it if you can put it to sleep it's a big help but you've got to watch out for those teams that kind of play things like type of finny to help support it if it hasn't got that lumberry there and maybe sometimes if it is carrying lumberry especially in a best of one if you're on a ladder it's not so bad if you're in a best of three situation but if you're on a ladder um, and this is predominantly what we're talking about today uh, it's going to be difficult to kind of gauge whether or not it's got the lumberry because that one turn can be the turn that really punishes you so big pokemon to watch out for but things like Torkoal, things like a really solid sun core in your team definitely help out with that rotom heat is an amazing counter to it it really struggles to hit rotom heat for very good damage especially if you get a nasty plot off you're going to be in a very good position to max yourself and get a max flare onto it do some big damage and also steel types uh, are not too bad and we've seen kind of a rise of things like stack attacker as well and celesteela that both can come in and kind of do a really good job and damage glastria before it's able to kind of get that momentum swing uh, so yeah another pokemon to definitely watch out for going to be a very popular one things like porygon 2 things like dust are going to be there supporting it as well so having a way to prevent the trick room is definitely the first step in uh, overcoming that kind of core build another pokemon to mention is um, galarian moltres it's not seen so much use in the restricted format it saw a little bit of use at the start but obviously going back into a kind of non-restricted format i think it's going to come back to the floor and be as powerful and prominent as it was before flying and dark type stabs are amazing you're going to get good utility out of max airstream and really good utility out of max darkness against a lot of things in this format that are weak against that and um, obviously with nasty plot and its berserk ability it can also kind of get that momentum swing if you let it get out of control giving it that free nasty plot 
is never good, but it's not always got nasty plot. You know, a lot of players are kind of going for Sucker Punch, for Snarl, whether we'll see that transition into Series 9 or not. They're just things to keep an eye on. But uh, Life Orb, Weakness Policy are kind of the main items and Safety Goggles as well. They're obviously for kind of Sleep Powder Venusaur that's got the Sun and Chlorophyll going uh, to kind of counteract the, the, the Moltres and slow it down a bit. But uh, definitely a Pokemon to watch out for. Uh, things like Regieleki handle it so well. Uh, things like Thunderous Incarnate as well. But you've got to watch out for obviously that Lightning Rod support that you can see uh, beside it. Togedemaru, Raichu, uh, Rhypeer even are definitely Pokemon to keep an eye out for if you're playing against uh, Galarian Moltres. But you can also revert back to things like Stack Attacker if you've got your own Trick Room. Moltres is not really a Pokemon that loves Trick Room too much. And Glastria is a great counter to it if you can get it in the right conditions. Next up, we're going to talk about Metagross. Metagross is definitely a Pokemon to mention going into Series 9. I think it's a very solid Pokemon and probably one of my favorite Pokemon in general to utilize in this format. Commonly seen with either the Weakness Policy or Assault Vest. Really value screen support as well to help the longevity to get the most out of the Weakness Policy once it's procced or to get the most out of that Assault Vest. And uh, you know, you commonly see Metagross paired up with something like Tapu Fini uh, where you'll get the Max Steel Spike, Steel Spike, Steel Spike, get that defense boost up so the Finny is sitting in a great position and then it can calm mind and just get carried away and then just use that momentum to kind of swing the battle into that player's favor. Uh, very good Pokemon in general, hits well against things like Glastria, uh, struggles a little bit against those Sun teams of course but if you can get the special defense boosts up or and if you've got screen support as well it definitely helps mitigate those a little bit but Metagross definitely a Pokemon I think to look at especially if something like Togekiss gets a lot more powerful but again at the same time you've got to be very careful. Uh, Dragapult could be a Pokemon on the rise and the more popular Dragapult gets and Spectria start to get the harder life becomes for something like Metagross. So you're going to have to have ways to kind of beat those Pokemon and obviously not to mention the biggest problem of all is Urshifu. So you need to have a good check to that in your team as well. But having something like a Togekiss in your team can definitely help out against those threats and the redirection alone just makes it a lot easier to manage Metagross and allow it to get those big hits off and things like that. And I know I haven't mentioned every single combination going into Series 9. I'm just trying to touch this, keep this short and make sure that you're aware of like a lot of the big kind of threats that are coming into the series at the minute. But another one to mention is obviously that's going to come to the floor, I think, and be quite prominent. And one of those teams that you definitely need to have answers for is Weezing and Reggie Gigas. It obviously did well in Players Cup 3 and did even better in Players Cup 2. We saw players like Alex Underhill pilot that to very good success in that tournament and then uh, Alberto Deza in the uh, Players Cup 3 pilot in a restricted format to uh, uh, Global Finals, which was amazing. So I think it's going to be a Pokemon now that you do definitely need to set up and take note of. So it's going to be uh, one of those Pokemon, especially the Weezing with that neutralizing gas, going to be very disruptive and the Regigigas in a prime position to kind of take control of that. Uh, so that's definitely a combination to either utilize yourself or just be aware of and then definitely have answers for in your own team build. Other Pokemon that are going to be prominent are definitely going be things like Urshifu, you're going to have Reggie Alecki, obviously Rillaboom and Landorus, uh, Theory and Four, Intimidate, and then obviously it goes without saying, but Incineroar are going to be still around, it's not going anywhere. The pop, the most popular Pokemon probably throughout every series that it's been utilized in, it's still going to be kicking around, but I would see probably a little bit more usage of things like Tapu Fini coming back into play with Calm Mind definitely a very strong Pokemon uh, but there are a few to mention now let's jump over to the rental cards for you before we wrap up today's episode but like I say I've got five rental teams to help you get started in series nine that'll be starting tomorrow as of watching this video the first team is going to be a Metagross Spectria team you can see the team on your screen in front of you now it is going to be made up of the Spectria the Metagross with the weakness policy Incineroar Tapu Fini gives you a nice core and then you've got that Thunderous Incarnate which helps out against some of those those big dark type threats to Metagross, namely Urshifu. And then you've got nice screen support as an alternative option of uh, Incineroar to, uh, with the Grimmsnarl there. And there's a nice option within this team with the Grimmsnarl having Swagger. The Thunderous I have give the Lumberry to, so uh, it kind of gets around uh, Venusaur, Chlorophyll Venusaurs and things that are faster than it, like Dragapult Spectria that are gonna try and Will-O-Wisp it. But you can also take advantage of the Swagger with your Grimmsnarl onto the, the Thunderous 
first turn one if the opportunity arises get that plus two boost straight away and do some really heavy damage which is a really nice option and kind of helps mitigate for not having that life or boost you can also use utilize the swagger if you can get yourself into good positions with tapu finney out on the field obviously get metagross in boost its attack boost incineroar's attack there's a lot of options there and the swagger feels like a good option and a good way out of some bad situations with this team the next rental team that we've got for you going into series nine is going to be a sun team it is made up of a gmax venusaur Torkoal, porygon 2 grimmsnarl ripiria and charizard so you've got gmax charizard there and the gmax venusaur it's going to be your very standard kind of sun team with a trick room switch in there with the porygon 2 going to be there to either reverse the trick room or set it up for you and uh, you've got an alternative option as well with the ripiria there that can operate in the trick room if it feels comfortable enough to do so and you've also got Tokol there uh, kind of helping out but Tokol in this team not so much of an offensive threat as more of a supportive threat which I feel like it's probably going to be and play that better role uh, in the early part of this format to help slow things down if you need it with the yawn the burning jealousy and all those status conditions that it can kind of help out with the next team is going to be one of my favorite new legendary pokemon it's going to be glastria and this pokemon i fell in love with from the very start of series seven so it's nice to go back to it now uh say goodbye to calyrex but here we go we've got uh, a very kind of standard looking glastria team supported by tapu finney helps out with the terrain obviously helps out with status as well on the glastria we've got dusclops as our main trick room center it is a lot more reliable in this format to series eight of Obviously hasn't got the threats like uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex anymore. Uh, you can set the Trick Room up a lot easier if you get it into position. And Dusclops are just a generally a very good Pokemon to come in and uh, just take damage if you needed to with that Eviolite. And uh, not only just to set the Trick Room up in those situations, you've got Incineroar, Regieleki, and then the Single Strike Urshifu to wrap this team up with. So if you have a go with this team, I hope you have a great time with it and a lot of success. So the next rental team that we've got for you today is going to be. A Galarian Moltres team. You can see it's made up of Galarian Moltres, Landorus, Stack Attacker, Rillaboom, Incineroar, and Rotom Wash. So this team is a little bit different. Uh, you've got the, the Moltres are going to be kind of the, the main kind of Pokemon on the team. But you've got a lot of setup here with the Moltres. You've got the Rotom Wash as well that can go for nasty plots. So between the two, you can kind of cover a lot of bases. You've got double fake out support with the Rillaboom, the Incineroar. And then you've got a Trick Room mode as well, which works perfectly in this format. You've got Stack Attacker that can come in, set the Trick Room up if the conditions are right. And it does so well against the very slowest of Pokemon like Torkoal, like Glastria and can do a lot of damage and then you've got double intimidate support as well which helps out pretty much most things on the team. The next team and the final team of this episode is going to be a rental team for a Togekiss Dragapult combination. Now this is a combination that saw a lot of success in a really early formats in the uh, Sword and Shield series but I do believe it has a lot of potential going into series 9. I think we saw the pickup and usage of Dragapult uh, at the back end of Series 7 and I do think that is going to continue going into Series 9. So this team's made up of the Togekiss, the Dragapult, uh, Lander Asterion, Rotom Heat, Rillaboom and the Rapid Strike Urshifu. So you've got a nice Firewater Grass Core in there, you've got uh, Intimidate, you've got the Dragapult as well that can set up and then you've got the Crit Kiss which can support as well but it can be a bit of a problem for opponents if they don't have answers to it. So they are the five rental teams that we've got for you today i'm sorry i couldn't have more but i've only got five slots on my game and i did want to help you out as much as possible going into the new series hopefully it's a nice mixture of different teams to kind of dip your toes in the water and help you get started in the new format find something that you like and hopefully if not be the team that you want to use inspire some ideas for yourself to kind of go forward with and start building yourself uh, remember that we do have a weekly circuit running it's a friendly tournament but it runs every week with our on our discord server so come over feel free to join we run it every friday we'll be starting our first series seven uh this coming friday so get over there the link to that is in the description as well but i uh, hope you found today's video useful uh, obviously the series nine format is going to be an interesting one just because we're going into a format now where it is a bit more developed than previous formats it's not something that we've kind of experienced before in sword and shield so i'm looking forward to it and seeing where the format goes and i hope you are too hope you find today's video useful thank you so much for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day take care of yourselves and i'll see you all for another episode very soon